is the name of your company, right? Uh, my company is the Joy Fairy. I have a Facebook group called Joyful Manifestations where people can just put, you know, things that are creating joy for them, share how they are creating their joy. But my Facebook, or excuse me, my business is the Joy Fairy. Okay, so it's all about joy then. Very Yeah, joyful everything for me, all about joy. I believe that we are here to experience and create love and joy. So actually mentioning that, like, um, I'll just ask you what you think, because I think this is something that mm -hmm. a lot of people struggle with and like me personally as well. Um, so th does that mean that you you stay joyful all the time? Like, how do you sort of like navigate that? How does that work? No, and that's, I'm actually really, really, really glad you asked me that question because that's kind of like a thing. Be like, oh, you're the joy fairy, you're just happy all the time. No, but I work with the law of attraction. So the law of attraction says what we're thinking about, what we're feeling about, we're bringing that to us, right? So I make conscious choices to shift my feelings because if I'm having a negative reaction to something, I was invo involved in a road rage incident, incident this week. It was my third. And it wasn't, I wasn't feeling joyful after that happened, right? I wasn't like, oh, that guy was screaming at me. That was great, right? I was feeling anxious. I was having all these horrible feelings. But when I was able to remove myself from the situation, I got home, I calmed down for a second, and I had a choice. I could either live in that and continue to feel it and then create more situations to feel anxious about, or I could do something that I like to call secret shifters, where we are taking things that we know work for us, right? Everybody's individual. You have things that make you happy as I have things that make me happy. My go-to secret shifter for me is I'm a grandma. I have a one-year-old grandson, and he is my entire world. So if I'm having a bad moment and I need to shift myself, I will call my grandson and video chat and he'll take the phone and he'll just run around the house. And even though I'm getting motion sick while he's running around the phone, it's changing my frequency. It's changing where I am. And then I go from that space to continuing what I'm doing. You know, I have a, I built a fairy garden out in my yard. I have a very small yard, but I want to make it as pleasant as possible. So if I need to do something, I can go out and play in my fairy garden. I can create a piece of art. I can read a book. I can, you know, if you're a TV junkie, you can go watch something on TV that creates joy for you. But it's this all about conscious shifting and conscious choice of where we're placing our thoughts. So many people feel like they're at the mercy of their thoughts and their feelings, and you're not. You are the only person in control of them. So you can choose to sit in it, or you can choose to do something about it. You know, sometimes it's getting help, right? Mental health help, because we need that to shift ourselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's important that we we exercise all avenues that we are feeling drawn to, to have the best mental health possible. Because I really believe being in joy is part of really good mental health. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. That was such a good answer. And uh, yeah, it's really helpful because I think um, I definitely know, yeah, about sometimes um, it's it's quite difficult to shift, right? So I think it's really mm -hmm. helpful that you said to to have something. What did you call it? The shift. I I call it a secret shifter, and I keep secret it in my back shifter. pocket, right? Yep. I have yeah. a list of them. I write them down. If I find something else, I'm like, oh, this is fantastic for me. Plants, right? I I I've, I always have like a black thumb, and then all of a sudden, it was all of a sudden like I could grow anything uh, other than succulents. Um, <laughs> But so now I will go and just play in the garden, right? It's just having this this thought of I know that this aligns with me and my joy. And then taking that extra step when you're feeling not good, when you're feeling sucked into something or like that black hole, because like I have severe anxiety, right? So when the guy was screaming at me and beeping his car or beeping his horn at me, I had a full on like panic attack. But I chose to move myself forward and not live in it because I know just knowing that you know the law of attraction is always working with us it's always working so you can choose to work with it you can choose to work against it or ignore it completely but since it's always working I just choose to work with it to create the most amazing life I can for myself mm -hmm. yeah I, it's really good that you mentioned the anxiety thing as well because yeah like again I think people sometimes think that if you do like manifestation or whatever, because you're, you're like a coach, this is kind of like, oh, yeah, they don't experience any of this. And it's, it's exactly the opposite. It's like everyone's still human. And um, and yeah, so 
so on that is that sort of like how did you decide to be a manifestation coach because there were so many methods and there were just like so many people out there and I've heard so many things and sometimes I get quite overwhelmed because I'm like I don't even know what's what anymore right so so like yeah what tell me about like your experience and how did you get here and what do you do and how does it work like from your point of view oh this is so good okay so the first time I was introduced to Law of Traction, it was 2007. I had just gone through a horrible divorce. I was working at a hospital, working crazy hours, making all right money, but like I was working crazy hours for it and I was a single mom. And I worked with this lady who like had seemingly had, in my eyes, had everything together, right? Because we only see, I, I want to make a little side note here. Don't judge yourself against other people because you're only seeing what they're putting out to the world, right? We all have this, this mask. And when we, I know we talk about it, don't put the mask on, but like we literally all put this mask on when we leave the house, right? When I go to the grocery store, people look at me and they see what they see. They see the, what I'm putting out there. They see the joy fairy, right? People don't see what's happening behind the curtain sometimes. So for me, years later, I was able to revisit this and realize this lady had stuff together, but not everything together. But in my, in my view at the time, she, she was everything. She had the body that a 20 year old would love to have. She had tons of money. She was married to a football coach. She had just like list it off. She had everything. And I was just going home and like, I felt like I had nothing. And one day she came to me and she handed me the movie, The Secret from Rhonda Byrne. And it absolutely changed my life. And it was, it's all about the law of attraction, learning how, what we're thinking about and what we're feeling about is really what we're bringing to us. And they focus very much on like the ask, believe, receive part of manifestation, right? So I followed this for years and I changed things throughout my life by following this ask, believe, receive. But what happened is I'd start following it. Like I manifested relationships, I'd manifested cars, homes, but I would do this thing where it's almost like, okay, so I'm doing this, this journey. I'm going up and I'm manifesting stuff. Oh, I got what I want. Now I kind of stop doing it and I forget and I go back down again and then I just go through my life and now I need something so now I'm going to manifest something so now I'm asking and believing and receiving and it all became about this whole let me manifest something and mm -hmm. as soon as I got the thing that I was manifesting now I'm done so I don't need to continue to live this way and it was I was on this roller coaster or a wheel from 2007 till mm, 2019 and it was like just an evolution for me of listening to different manifesting manifestation gurus, watching different movies, reading different books, just all this different information. And I felt like what I was seeing was the secret. And a lot of these people talk about that ask, believe, receive, but nobody's really talking about the action. And that is what got me fired up because that was the biggest thing I noticed was missing is that the, and why I wasn't really continually manifesting because I wasn't putting any action into things. I was just kind of doing surface manifesting like, oh, I want this and the universe will bring it to me. But then it doesn't really stay around because I'm not really feeling grateful for it. I'm not working to get it because let me tell you something, the things that we work for are the manifestations that stick around. I know people talk about like manifestation, like, oh, I close my eyes and something appears. Personally, that's never really how it's happened for me. I can't stare at a manifestation or a, a a vision board right and if the only action i'm doing for that vision board is putting more pictures on it nothing has manifested for me it is all about mm -hmm. so for me where the secret and things like that were all about ask believe receive i've started a four-step manifestation process that i work with my clients and i get ask believe act receive because if we don't put that action in there nothing appears or it appears and like i said it just doesn't go like go anywhere because that action when we put that action there all of a sudden we have this attachment to it in a different way because i worked for it it's mine i created this right if i if i just let's think about christmas morning and santa claus right the kids they make their list so they're asking for what they want they believe in santa claus so it's ask believe and then they wake up christmas morning and they receive it right two months after christmas those toys are broken on the floor. Mom's screaming, I'm going to throw these away if you don't put these away. Like nobody cares about the thing two months later because nobody didn't work for it. It's not important to them. It was just handed over. So when we put that ask, believe, act, receive in there, 
I had to do something for it. The same kid gets that toy by going out onto his dad's farm and working every day and making that money. Now dad is giving him the money to purchase this for himself. Now that means something because that still is manifestation. The manifestation isn't making it come out of thin air. Manifestation means to take something from your thought and bring it into your reality. And how you do that, you know, that's up to you. For me, I have found this four step process is working out all right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so I wanted, I was going to ask about that because, yeah, so um, f for me personally, sometimes I feel like I get clear clear signs of what it is that I'm supposed to do in order to manifest something and then other times I'm very much like am I just making this up right like am I it's, it's that same thing again like thoughts create reality so then sometimes I don't know it can be like quite confusing and I feel like yeah some people um yourself included I guess you're like you'll be very I guess you you know like which action to take um so that's kind of my first question on that. And then the second one was about, because you mentioned that you do still get things if you don't put the action in, but then you don't appreciate them. Is that right? Yeah. And not always, right? If you're not fully committed to your manifestation, that might not happen, right? So I'm not going to say, yeah, it's just because you've asked for it, it's going to receive, you're going to yeah. receive it. But I can tell you, if you do the action, there is a much more higher percent that you're going to receive something right let's let's put it into the perspective of somebody looking for a job okay i can say i want a job i could say i'm going to be a uh um radiologist right i could say that but if i haven't gone to school before that doesn't happen but or let's see say i even went to school for it okay so now i've got this you know degree and i want this job but if i'm not going out and filling out the applications or even fill out the application but then I'm not checking my email or answering the phone when it rings. I'm not doing the action steps and showing the universe what I want. Um, oh, this is this is a perfect example. I have a client who wanted love. She wanted, you say wanted love. She wanted a relationship. She wanted to be married. She wanted somebody, a, a man to come and move into her home with her. She had built this beautiful home and she really was wanting to have like a full home. And so I asked her, what does your closet look like? And she was like, oh my God, it's so full of all my clothes. And I'm like, but well, where's he supposed to put his clothes? And I've been to your house. I'm going to ask a rhetorical yeah. question. What does your garage look like? Because I know you have a two car garage. And she's like, oh, it's just full of all this stuff, you know? I'm like, where's he supposed to put his car? Right? So if we're asking for something, yet we're not making space for or doing actions to get into our life, we're not showing the universe by our actions and our desires what we truly want, right? If I really want this guy to come and, and appear and live in my home, I'm going to make space so there's space for him because right now all I'm doing is showing the universe that there's no place for this. So it's really aligning our actions and our intentions with what we're wanting. So you asked about... Um, about like when you're manifesting something and how you're feeling about it and like being sure or not. And it's all about how you feel, right? So the law of attraction, our, our words are our spells, our, our feelings are our spells, right? Our actions are certainly our spells and our thoughts are our spells. So it's so important that you put attention to each of those things and that you pay attention to how you're feeling about those things, right? If you're if you have an idea for something you want to manifest and you're like, oh, I should do it this way. And then you're like, oh, what? maybe I should do it this way. Play out the two scenarios in your mind. Which one feels like it's more in alignment with your core values or with your goals? A good thing also is to always make sure when you're manifesting something that you're seeing the end result. You're, you're see you want to take actions for now and the next step, but you want to see it long term, right? I don't want to manifest just me leaving the house today, I want to manifest, oh, I go to the grocery store and I, I find a hundred dollar bill out in the yard. So I, or in the parking lot. So I'm going to see the hundred dollar bill. And I'm not saying that I'll talk about that. And sex actually reminds me, let's talk about manifestation of money because that's a big one for people. That's hard for yeah. people. Right. Yeah. So make sure that you are doing the actions in alignment with what you're wanting, but also thinking about which way the, the, if the road, if there's a fork in the road, you're like, I want this now. You're like, oh, maybe I'll do it this way or maybe I'll do it this way. Play out the scenarios. If I do it, A, how does this turn out? If I do it like B, how does this turn out? Which one's more in alignment with what I want? But again, it comes back to that first, that asking thing. You have to know what you want.
-hmm. None of this, if you don't, if it's really, if you don't do the ask part first, none of it really matters because you're just sending chaotic, crazy signals out to the universe and it doesn't know what to give you. So it's very clear of like, I want blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, so money manifestation is sometimes just, difficult for people. Absolutely. Just on that. Mm -hmm. um, so when, so this, what about if you're an indecisive person or like you, maybe you think that you want something, but then in, and this could be money, for example, this week, I'm like, you know, I, I'll write it down or whatever. And I'll ask the universe and I'll put in the action because I want, I don't know, a thousand pounds to buy a new car or something. But mm -hmm. then next week comes along and I'm like, actually, no, I need, I want 2000 pounds now. So like, how, how does that work? Like, can you do that? Or is it the thing already like in the process? No, if something's already in the process, that's going to that's going to stop and something else will manifest or you'll manifest both. Right. But it's not you don't have to like you can't rewind your thought. Yeah. Right. You just you can't. It's not physical for us to be like or like physically possible for us to be like hitting the VCR tape and hitting the rewind button in our brains. It already happened. And just because it already happened doesn't mean like the universe is like, oh, well, now you can't have that or you can't have this, the universe is neutral, right? It's not a, it's not punishing you and it's not rewarding you, it is reacting to what you're thinking about and what you're putting out. So if you're thinking about, you know, last week, oh, last week was a thousand pounds. No, I need 2000 pounds. You need to let go of a thousand pounds and now attach your thoughts to the 2000 pounds because that's okay. what you're manifesting. So it's all about letting go of, letting go of the thing that you're not wanting. And you also don't want like, attach yourself to the outcome of the 2000 pounds, right? You don't want to say I'm getting 2000 pounds. And then all you're thinking about is I need 2000 pounds. I need 2000 pounds because that what's happening is now you're turning into this need. And if I don't have it, I can't do this. And then it becomes this fear and need based thing. And so instead of manifesting the beauty and the joy that you're really trying to create, you're manifesting things that are going to be answering your puzzle of give me something fearful give me something horrible give me something to be anxious about and that's what you because you're creating that oh i feel so fearful of the money not coming well the universe yeah. isn't like here here's the money to make you feel better it's like oh fear here we go more fear more fear again it's neutral it's not punishing you nor rewarding you it just is mm -hmm. yeah it's really funny that you say that because i've definitely yeah, I think I've never manifested things when I've been in that need, um, like energy. And then sometimes I've um, asked for stuff and then completely forgotten about them. Uh, this is very true when it comes to love, um, that it's, yeah, when if you're, you need a partner, then, you know, you, or you're either going to attract the wrong people or you're not going to attract people at all. But then like when you're happy with yourself then people somehow just seem to appear and then you're like, oh, yeah, I did ask for that, didn't I? But then right. it's like, oh, I, I'd forgotten about it. Right. Um, so I t totally, yeah, completely resonate with that. Um, I would definitely just, a I'm sorry, give me just can you stop talking now? Sorry, my wife just walked in. I apologize. She's walking my dog. I'm so sorry. Speaking of love, it's all right. Yes, yeah, speaking of love. <laughs> this is what um, happens on these things. Like it's it's normal. I'm, I apologize so so much. I'm so sorry. I know it's fine. Um. I'm sorry, what were you asking me? I'm sorry. No, so I was just saying I completely resonate um, with that, the whole like wanting and needing and, and all of that stuff. Uh, but so like I was talking yeah, specifically about love, but you were going to talk about money. And I think that, yeah, it's really helpful because I think those are like like the uh, the main two things people are always, you know, manifesting or trying to manifest. And it's just like, oh, I just need money and love. And Do you want to know time. something funny? I Go thought on. that until I started doing manifestation coaching. It's oh, so really? interesting. Yes. So that's actually very, I'm really glad you brought that up because, you know, so many times people feel like, well, there's only so much stuff in the world, right? And we all want money. We all want love. It's not true. I went into this, honestly, I went into this thinking that everybody was going to be trying to manifest money. And I approached it that way too. My first set of clients, I every time I would start talking about manifestation, I kept bringing it back to money. And then I realized I was getting some kind of weird reactions because I was assuming, because my whole life, because I grew up with lack of money yeah. and in that mindset, my focus is always that everybody's manifesting money. Of course, they're manifesting money. We all want money. No, no, people, man, man, people, 
people want to manifest just feeling good. They want to manifest living joyful lives, traveling. And I know money, we need money for travel, but for them, it's not the money. It's like, I see this destination in my mind. And all I can think about is this destination or they'll focus on um, a certain career path, mm -hmm. right? So it's just these things, pretty much people are always just manifesting the thing that they think is going to bring them joy. Mm -hmm. So is this, is this something that you teach people as well? Um, yes. That, yeah, so with the whole, yeah, the whole, yeah, so manifesting things, it's like the best thing is not going to bring you joy. Like, it, it's like, it's like money. It's like, it's, it's a resource and you can use it for, yeah, like you said, like for traveling for these things that you enjoy, but just money is not, it's not like if you give me loads of money, I'm not going to be like, oh my God, I'm happy forever and ever right. and ever. Well, that's not the funny thing. That's actually what I wanted to say to you about manifesting money is mm -hmm. that it's, generally it's hard for people, right? Uh, for me included, it's, it's, if you don't grow up like seeing loads of cash, the 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 thought of that is kind of like, yeah. well, the, what is, <laughs> sure, sure, I could do that. Yeah, right. The crazy that crazy joy fair lady. She told me I can manifest cash. She's crazy, right? Yeah. No, like so. I understand that. A lot of times, what I'll do is somebody's having a hard time manifesting money. Is tell them to think about what you want the money for, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we had the. We had the DuckTales cartoon and there was Scrooge McDuck and he'd jump into the, into the big swing pool of money and he'd be, but most people that doesn't resonate joy. I'm a tiny bit of a germaphobe. So the thought of swimming in a bunch of actual money completely freaks me out. I have zero desire to do that. But are there things that I could think of or imagine myself using that that money could buy absolutely and it's much easier for me personally and like i said some people are money magnets where they just walk around manifesting money i have clients who just like it's no big deal just cash comes cash comes and then i have clients who are like no matter what i do i can't manifest cash so then i'm like well what do you want the cash for right mm -hmm. let's think about that because if the cash inherently isn't giving you a sense of joy it's going to be hard to manifest it but mm -hmm. if we can focus on what we're going to do with that cash, all of a sudden there's a different spin on it and it becomes easier to imagine because I can certainly imagine myself laying on the beach in Aruba, buying my tropical drink and handing the guy over some money for a tip or whatever, right? Like I can imagine that, but if you just said, hey, somebody's going to give you a check for, you know, $100,000 or pounds, like that, that's kind of daunting for people. But just imagine yeah. if I said to you, Imagine if somebody gave you, you know, a million pounds, what would you do with it? Right. right? And, and if you were like, oh, I'd go on holiday. And I'd be like, where are you going on holiday? And you'd be like, I'm going to Cancun. I'd be like, okay, now tell me about your, about, tell me about your hotel. Tell me about what you do there, right? That's how we do the manifesting. Now we start focusing on what are we going to do with, the, with this money? Like, or what is this thing that I'm manifesting look like? What do I, what am I experiencing? How am I feeling about it? That's the, that's mm -hmm. the manifestation key. There is that feeling about mm -hmm. things. I'm so glad that you said this because I haven't heard this before, but it makes so much sense because um, what you said is so true. And I, I see like all these stories, like on YouTube and stuff of people being like, I manifested like I remember there was this one that was like I manifested five grand like in a week and then it was like her dad is rich and gave her five grand or something and I was like okay right. great like my <laughs> parents wouldn't be able to do that so I'm not really sure but anyway uh, so what you yeah but so what you said is so true like and I've tried to like visualize yeah just someone putting a check like people don't even write checks here like you someone putting a check through my door and then obviously my logical brain takes over and it's like why who would do that right because well no, okay. who, but, but let's 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 play that scenario out though right so do, yeah I know we talk, we don't really send a lot of checks now right because it's just different yeah. But so there's two things about that. Number one, companies yeah. still send checks. So we, I have received rebates for things that I was not expecting. I was involved in a class action lawsuit and it was something stupid like at Verizon 25 years ago. And all of a sudden I got a check and it wasn't a lot. It was like $25 or something. But let me tell you something. When I opened up the mailbox and there was a $25 check, I was not like, well, that's stupid. I was like, that's fantastic. I was not expecting yeah. that. The other thing of that though is Think about 
when you're manifesting the money, like it doesn't have to be a check either, right? You can manifest like, mm -hmm. okay, my favorite way to manifest if I'm trying to manifest money is to see myself opening my PayPal. See yourself, like go on, like, so I have a, a, thing, a swipe on my phone to unlock my phone. So I imagine myself going to my phone, unlocking my phone. I imagine myself scrolling over to my PayPal app, clicking on my PayPal app, opening it up and seeing the figure there, right? $2,500. And now I mm -hmm. see that there. And so that's what I'm manifesting. So if it's not believable for you for to have a check, like I said, yeah. I would believe money comes in all forms. It comes to me from everywhere. So I would definitely start that mantra for yourself that it comes from everywhere. Don't think, oh, it can't come from the mail because it can. Don't don't limit where your manifestation can, can come from, but also utilize what feels familiar and good for you to create your manifestations, what feels like believable because that's part of that ask, believe, res mm -hmm. actress, right? If we don't believe it, then if I'm like, Oh, they're going to send me $2,500. I'm like, oh, they're not really going to send me $2,500. What do you think I'm putting more? Let's think about the feeling aspect of this, right? What am I putting more feeling into? The thought of yeah. they're sending me the $2,500 or they're not really going to send it to me. Mm -hmm. I'm putting more feeling into the thought of they're not really going to send it to me, right? I said it like I'm affirming they're going to do it, but... The core of me that. is like, nobody ever sends me money, right? Like, mm -hmm. so that, that's, we have to drown that voice out mm -hmm. and really be with that believing and knowing it's mm -hmm. for us. So however is believable for you to imagine money's coming to you, make sure that you're focusing on that way. Okay. Um, that's, yeah, no, that's helpful. I think so. I've, um, I have manifested money before, um, but so, but yeah, I think, yeah, there's definitely that kind of like disconnect because I know that it's real because it's happened, but like, mm -hmm. like it's not something like that happens all the time. So, so then it's like that thing that you were saying about like just the way again that you grow up and stuff like, you know, and, and I know about like all healing your relationship with money and all that stuff, which is like something I'm like definitely working on because money was always so bad growing up. So I know that that's the first thing. But then, so how, how do you shift that then when you, because it's like, it's like some people like you can't control your thoughts, but then it's like you can control your thoughts. But then is it just about like repeating like the same thing until you actually physically like start to be? Yeah. it? Yes. And I think don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's not like you're being graded on it. You know, yeah. there, if there's nobody else in your head knowing what you you're manifesting. That's the thing, too, is we put so much pressure on the things that we've decided I'm doing this. And then yeah. we act like the entire world is hinged on something we've decided for ourselves, And nobody else in the whole world even knows what we're doing up in here except for us. Right. And so, so yeah, you're put, if you're putting too much pressure on yourself to I have to manifest this, I have to manifest this. Again, we're coming from, from this place of need and want and lack. And, and now we're going to just, that's why you're not like con the continual manifestation isn't happening because it's almost like, oh, I got this. Now I know I can't have any more, right? You have to just keep doing it. It's putting those reps in and just keep doing it. And if you feel yourself like not on the path or you feel like, oh, I'm having a hard time focusing on bringing myself money, go back to the focusing on what you want the money for, right? Because it's not all about money. We are here to experience joy. So what is the feeling of the thing that you want for the money? Do you want the cold hard cash? Or do you want the experience of going to this place or mm. having this couch, right? If it's, I want to buy this couch, and I need to manifest this money so I can have this couch. Well, then imagine what the couch looks like. Imagine yourself laying on the couch. Imagine yourself in the showroom buying it. You know, imagine yourself handing over that money to that guy. Because that's another thing, too. We need to make sure that we are feeling good with being reciprocal with money. That it's not just feeling like, I'm always going to get money. I'm always going to get money. We need to feel generous and grateful for having money to give away as well mm -hmm. because if we're coming from a place of scarcity and lack then we're holding on to all our money like that where they say like white knuckling like gripping onto something so tight if we're afraid that we're not gonna get more sometimes it's hard to be generous but the generosity shows the universe that we're in this reciprocal energy of money coming and money going that money just flows through me we just always wanted mm -hmm. to have that feeling that money flows through me so, so the thing that I've heard a lot of people say about acting as if it's already there is, is like how you should, I guess, feel like instead of 
yeah asking for something do you kind of do you like yeah you act like you already have it because I've I've heard that before no oh yeah okay so yes and so for me that would be part of the believing part right Mm -hmm. so if I'm manifesting something I'm going to ask for what I want so let's manifest a bottle of water okay so you you think about it you ask for it I really need a bottle of water or I really want a bottle of water right now I can see myself drinking a bottle of water I'll imagine myself going to the refrigerator, opening the ball, the refrigerator up, pulling the water ball out, cracking it open, taking a drink, right? And you're just really placing yourself in the imaginary place of it's happening right now. So mm-hmm. imagining what do you feel when you're doing it or manifesting it? Who's around you? What are you hearing? And really that's, you're really just wanting to give the universe like pretty much a view of your movie. This is what it's going to be like when I manifest this. And now here, this is, here it so is. give me this. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Create a movie in your head. That's so it's like that. Uh, like you're, you're sitting in a 3d movie theater where you feel like you're immersed in the experience, yeah. create that in your mind to give the universe the key of this is what I want. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I've heard different uh, theories on this. Do you personally think it's okay to put dates on things? Like if you want to manifest something by a certain date, because I've heard some people say that this is, yeah, that you shouldn't do that about divine timing and all that. So (laughs) So I'm kind of back and forth. Uh, I don't really have a exact opinion on it. I don't Mm -hmm. do that because I don't believe that we, the universe works on man's time. I believe that we like, we put arbitrary numbers on things that the universe doesn't necessarily resonate with. Just like, um, you know, uh, like witches will have a specific holiday and some people are like, well, it's the 21st of this month. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't think like the sun or the moon really cares that, you know, we say it's the 21st of June or whatever. Right. It's the, the universe, the nature works much more fluidly than humans. Do we need to Mm -hmm. label everything? So, Mm. My, the, I honestly think the only reason I tell somebody not to put a date on, because I don't buy into it, but if it made you feel better, okay, you know, if it, if it strengthens your manifestation, so there's no one answer for any of these things. Mm-hmm. It's all going to be what works for you and what makes you feel the strongest in what you're manifesting. Mm-hmm. For me, I don't think I would necessarily do a timeline though, because if I say it's going to happen by June 21st, and now June 21st happens, and now it's June 22nd. What is that? Where does that leave me? Yeah. I put the, this constraint on it. Do I now just give up on it and think it's not going to happen? Mm-hmm. And maybe the thing that was happening was right around the corner. Right. You know, we don't want to give up right before the miracle happens. Yeah. You know, I, I want to backtrack for one second. You, you said something before and I thought about something I wanted to say and I didn't. When you were mm-hmm. talking about um, manifesting things, <laughs> we talked about manifesting things. That was the first in this conversation. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry. Totally, I just totally had totally slipped my brain. I'm sorry. No, no, Too much no, not one time. So much magic happening at once. <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. Um, actually, since <laughs> you mentioned that, because you mentioned um, um, like witches, right? Um, and on YouTube, like you do moon magic and stuff. And that was actually, it's funny that we've talked about manifestation for so long. Uh, because I actually wanted to to like to really talk about that as well. Um, beca- and then you do tarot reading as well. Um, is that is that like sort of like all together um, as in or is like because you can manifest like like moon magic. Um, mm-hmm. That's sort of like magic is sort of like the same kind of thing, right? Um, so so what mm-hmm. I guess what what would be the difference like between the two? Because I with like I, like I don't know much yet about moon magic but I've again I've read and stuff that you should do certain things on certain dates and and things like that so yeah what what are the links and um yeah just tell me tell me a bit about it well again it's if you feel about it right so mm-hmm. somebody right. who doesn't somebody who who's a master manifester they manifest all things all the time mm-hmm. if they don't believe in the power of being out in the light of the moon or it, you know, it's healing or any of that. If they don't believe in it, it's not going to work for them. It's 
it's not going to do anything. It's just more, it's just let me go outside and put some water out there or whatever. Mm -hmm. There's no, it really, this all comes back to what are you feeling about? What are you believing in? What are, what are you attaching your thoughts to? So for me, as a witch, yes, I do moon magic. I will go out and put out my tarot cards and my uh, water and my crystals so that they can be under the moon's energy, right? I think about how powerful the moon is. The moon is so powerful that the, mag the magnetic waves like shift our tides in the ocean. It moves water. Mm -hmm. And we are more than 60% water. Mm -hmm. So if it shifts water in the oceans, I'm going with it. I'm going to let it shift yeah, things yeah. in me and I'm going to use that power. So I will just go out and put the things out that I want to be cleansed by the moon. Um, mm -hmm. Every moon has a different name, right? So we, uh, I don't know if it's the same in England, actually, or in the UK, in America, because we have the indigenous people here who named our moons for different things that were happening. We utilize those, right? So like, June's month or June's moon was the strawberry moon. It's the time of year here where strawberries are ripening and they're sweet and you know oh, there's yeah. abundance of them. So when I put my things out for the June moon, that's what I was focusing on, the sweet things in life. Abundance. It's all those kinds of things. So it's just really it's intentions, right? It's all ways that we can connect our intentions and feel closer to what it is that we're doing. And whether that's manifesting or just existing. For me, moon magic is more honestly not as much about manifestation as it is about just existing and being in presence of this other amazing being, celestial beings. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's um, yeah. So strawberries are like really ripe here as well at the moment. It's like yeah, strawberry season. Mm -hmm. Everyone's got strawberries. I'm eating not strawberries. So, so and I, I hadn't even like sort of like connected mm -hmm. with that because so so like i like what you said about so you sort of like when you were under the moon you, you were talking about like sweetness and stuff so it's kind of to do with what's going on at the time as well and the seasons and it's everything's like connected yep. right so, so yeah july it's july's moon we'll call yeah. it the the buck moon because it's the time that the bucks the, the deer go out and they shed their antlers mm -hmm. so when I do my July moon practice, what I'll be focusing my attentions on are shedding things that no longer serve me, things that I'm attached to or attached to me that aren't coming with me to this next part of my life. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's just me. Some, uh, somebody else could do it completely different. But for me, it's all that. What does this moon mean? And what does that really represent? And how does that affect me? Like, and not affect me because I'm not all about me, but like how, how, how am I processing this information and, and what's happening? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, um, this, okay. I really like that because I, so if this is something more, something I want to learn more about, but so for me, I was just kind of like under the impression that was like, you know, new moon set intentions, you know, uh, full moon, let go of what no longer serves you and stuff. But so it's so much more than that. And I'll give you the biggest secret about all of everything. And isn't okay. everything ready? We're all making it up as we go along. Ah, oh, yeah, I love hearing that, yeah. <laughs> right? Every single one of us. I could pull out books of all these high yeah. princesses and these witches. And all, and it, it, that, that's nice. And that was their magic. You know whose magic yeah. I'm using? Mine. You're using your magic, right? You're making it up as you go along. I'm making it up as I'm going along, just like they're making it up as we go along. And, you know, we look at them like, oh, they have all, you know, people who are experts in fields, they have all the answers, but we all have the answers. Yeah, I'm not yeah. talking about like, obviously, I'm not going to go try to be like a, a, a neurosurgeon or something. Like, I'm not going to try to do brain surgery or something. And I'm not an expert in that, but something where it's like metaphysical. Yeah, you're just a strong in your manifestation and in your powers as I am or the next person. It truly is understanding your powers, accepting them, and then and just following. Like you were asking before, like, how do you know which way to go? It's just all intuition. It's all intuition. Follow what, you know, you're, you're hearing, your mind's eye is telling you. You know, you can align yourself with your chakras, start getting tuned into your body, and then just really start listening to the messages you're receiving mm -hmm. yeah okay um i think yeah it's i think sometimes people 
yeah like i i look at you and i'm like you're like yeah i'm a witch and loads of people you know say this i think so my mum is a witch like and she doesn't like do anything but she's just um mm -hmm. like we've spoken about this before but like i then i actually had like a, a like a meeting i went to like this um witch uh fair and then like i met someone there and then i was kind of like you know um i don't i don't really know how to start and i keep hearing this thing about yeah like just you just about getting to know yourself and your intuition and this stuff but it's just it's sometimes so difficult because like we're kind of like we're like humans right and we're just like oh this is what we do when we're very like in our bodies and then all of a sudden you're just kind of like actually i think you know i have these powers and we all do and and then it's like what do i do now i don't know what to do how do i tap right. into that right and it's all again and it goes right back to you listen to your intuition so i didn't um i'm a solo practitioner i don't have like a coven i don't have somebody that i call and i'm like what should i do with this i literally yeah. i just do what feels strong for me so i i i'm a kitchen witch so that is because yeah. all of my magic pretty much happens in the kitchen i'm i i my love language is spoiling people with food like i realize it's because of my childhood uh when there wasn't food it was the women in the neighborhood who got together and had me over like i'd play with somebody and they'd be like oh i'll come and eat dinner or you know somebody bring a meal like so it was the women who rallied around me and showed love by taking care of me and my brother mm -hmm. by providing food and i realized that's come to me in my adulthood that i love to take care of people by if you come to my house like what can let me cook you something what do you like like and it's just this that's spoiling with let me put my intentions into it and so that kind of just grew over time to where i realized that i put so much love and attention and time into my cooking and i was unintentionally adding all these intentions in like i was just thinking about these things that i wasn't doing on purpose and then when i realized that mm. oh different like herbs have different magical associations with them and it's true because i know like for me um when i eat something with basil in it or if i'm using basil i am having this thought of like success in my mind right so basil is great for success it's also great for protection so when i'm making a recipe or something and i'm adding in i'll be thinking about this is what i'm bringing to the this is what i'm putting bringing to the table with this so it's you know and i made I'm not saying I like made it up, but like for me, I kind of just crafted my practice as I went along. And that's how I found out like what worked mm -hmm. for me. Right. That's, I had never even like thought about this. Like when I sometimes, yeah, if I'm making food, but I'm putting like intention into what I'm cooking, because a lot of the times I think I'm not even thinking about, I'm thinking about something else. And then, so yeah, the food like doesn't come out very nice or whatever. And it's like, well, on the back of my spice jars, yeah. I have, I took labels and I yeah. write down what the magical association or the metaphysical association is mm -hmm. with that spice. So mm -hmm. if I'm using it and I'm like, or if I'm like trying to, when I had that, when I had the road rage incident this week, I, mm -hmm. I, I was making spaghetti sauce for my family that day. Mm -hmm. So I, so I used specifically spices in my cooking that were creating a protection spell for me mm -hmm. and my family mm -hmm. so uh on the back of the jars i'll just have written like what it is like basil gives you this 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 and then as i'm cooking i could take that and look at the label and be like oh yeah basil is protection okay and i'll take a pinch and as i'm dropping it into the sauce right i'm focusing on that i'm really feeling that and seeing that while I'm putting that in. So for me, the protection is seeing a big white bubble around myself. That's protection for me. I don't, protection for me is not the, like I, something's coming at me. It's kind of like mm -hmm. me putting this big bright light out and that's what's protecting me. Mm -hmm. So if, for that to like work with the food, do you, you have to put the intention into it when you're cooking it or is mm -hmm. it like, okay, yeah. So the, yeah. with the spices. And, and it's all, never mind yeah right because so this actually i'm really glad we were talking about this this comes back to me for like when we just talk about like creating hexes for people and i probably will be getting people might be saying something about me saying this but i'm gonna say it anyways i don't think we really hex people mm -hmm. i think that we can't manifest for others mm -hmm. because i don't so this is this is my 
favorite way to put this. I don't know how else to explain this any better. If you saw a homeless man on the street and every day you walked past this homeless man and every day in your mind, you thought about him being gifted money, him being given opportunities, him having all these things. And you were just all these good wishes for him. And you walked past him every day. Now you didn't do anything else. You literally just are putting your wishes into him and you can even go home and make a money spell for him, right? You could do all these things, but that's all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that you doing all of that in your mind will change his place in life or the things he's going through? I'm guessing not. (laughs) I don't think. I could be so wrong. I am I am a human. I am fallible. I could be totally wrong. But in my mind, no matter how many times I walk past him and wish well for him, yeah, I'm not manifesting his life. He's manifesting his life, right? The only thing mm-hmm. that I can do that's going to change something for him is if I give him money, offer him a job, mm-hmm. do something like that. But me just going in every day being like, oh, I wish he had money. 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 I don't think that's going to change something for him. So for me... People doing like hexing and things like that. That's how I feel about that. I believe that the only way we're creating something for somebody else is creating a self-fulfilling prophecy for them. Like, so if a witch was like, mm-hmm. oh, well, she's saying that I'll hex her. You know, I, okay. I believe the only way that's really true is if you tell me that you hexed me and now I'm going to create in my you mind. Oh no, she's, yeah. Like, right. Yeah. Right. I do I'm not really, believe I'm that really... we manifest for somebody else. Cause I, I really feel like if we manifested for some for other people, there'd be no sick babies, there'd be no yeah. assaults, there'd be uh, right. We, there'd just be nothing. There'd be none of this if we could manifest for other people. Nobody's child would ever die. Yeah, no, yeah. that makes complete sense. Um, I actually ask someone about this sometimes, so it's, I'm really glad we're having this conversation. Just about just yeah, sending like I guess yeah, good wishes, which is all that they are, right? Um, But then, so that actually reminded me of something else, which is something that I've read um, a a bit about as well, about, um, so like love spells, right? And um, that you can't, what was it? It's like if you, because I think if it was like, if you, like I've read a lot about like spells before and then I was like, kind of like, how does this work? Like a while ago. And so this kept coming up a lot. And it was like, if you, I don't know if you try and do like a love spell on someone that's kind of like hexing someone because like if because it's like if I don't know it's like if the person you're taking is, away their free will kind of thing right yeah but, then but, yeah. then but then that's not possible anyway because of that right because yeah exactly so it's the same thing that it's like so you're not really um you're not because I remember like there's so much on the internet and I remember like well if this is like so dangerous then why is there so many people being like here's a love spell you know um so then and then like what happens are they the selling you the love spell because that's why <laughs> <laughs> no 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 i mean like not i mean there's something yeah, no, but, um, yeah exactly but it's like i was like well why why are there so many of these things on the internet so, like what i'd be interested to know is if we i am very like uh, uh creative minded but i'm also very analytical minded so i'd love to know these people creating these love spells i'd love to yeah. know about their their relationships yeah (laughs) right yeah yeah i'd like to know what kind of romantic relationship you've manifested or you have that this has worked for you that's what that's what i'd like to know so don't even like again we're all putting out this perception of who we are Mm -hmm. to people right so this witch is making these love spells she's just putting that out there she's probably like me in her kitchen just putting oh let me put a little basil in there let me put some whatever right and she's just crafting it so for me that doesn't unless you're doing it yourself yeah and putting your thoughts into it that's i I, Mm -hmm. i'm not big into i used to sell intention candles and i i think they're great and it, it was good for me because i was doing vending events and at vending events it's hard to not have something yeah. but the, the problem with that is it's my intentions right like right. and so it's it's kind of hard because even though you know those things are there if you're not the one who's really thinking about it and feeling about it how are you experiencing it other than being like oh this is a love candle and i guess you know that can be very powerful but mm-hmm. yeah i don't i y- you can absolutely manifest love but I believe that you do it by being loving, right? Whatever yeah. I'm manifesting, I'm going to put that out. So if I want to manifest love, 
I'm going to be loving. I'm going to open up my closet for space for the other person. I'm going to like, that's, that's the spell work for me is what am I doing to create these opportunities to happen? Or what am I doing to seize these opportunities when they happen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And talking, talking about, yeah, spell work, I think, yeah, you've kind of like simplified it for me right. because I think, yeah, if you like someone who's never done a spell, like there's like just for anything. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then like the first thing that people do nowadays, you'd go on the internet, you know, spell for whatever. <laughs> right. And then it's like, there's just all these different things. And then I've seen like, again, candles, it's like a red candle for love, a white candle for prosperity a gold candle. And then, right. and then, and, and then, then yeah, like, like, oh, which candle? Oh, I have the wrong candle. Yeah. yeah. No, it's just yeah. way too much. The universe does not care about any of this. So you're, it's all manifestation. Right. And it all comes down to feelings. So if I feel like a blue candle is healing and you feel like a white candle is healing, I should light a blue candle if I'm trying to do a healing spell. You should light a white candle. And that's that, right? There is no, there, again, we're all making it up as we go along. There is nobody saying it's a blue candle or it's a white candle. There is none. There is none. It is opinions. A lot, a lot, a lot of opinions. Mm-hmm. So okay, the, and, it, yeah. and the only opinion that will matter in your manifestations is yours. Yeah. So it's all about my intention or like, yeah, the person's yes. intention that they're doing it. And that's why, because I've seen people, yeah, yes. selling intention candles and things like that for sure. Um, and yeah, that makes complete sense. It's like, they're very nice and great, but it's like, this is what you've put into it. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I think a lot of people mm -hmm. get overwhelmed with, with, it, with all of this because it can seem, yeah, very overwhelming. But then it's all about, like what it's like as well like what elements you connect with what crystals you connect with what just just about yeah um okay no that's um that's yep. really helpful I think you are there. you are definitely you you are making this up as you go along so it is all about for you what connects for you what makes you feel good what makes you feel powerful makes you feel magical mm -hmm. that's it Mm -hmm. right what works for me just like i was saying we don't all want the same thing not everybody is manifesting love or manifesting mm -hmm. money right we're all so different we all have we are all coming from the place of all these experiences that we've had so it creates where we are now and our desires for the future so somebody else can't really create your magic for you you have to do it on your own it's a self it's a self-fulfilling job mm -hmm. okay well, great. Um, I think we've been chatting for like a really long time. There was definitely like more stuff that I wanted to talk about, but um, I can always bring you on again, talk about tarot Absolutely. and things like that. Great, great, great. Yeah. Um, so this, yeah, it's been like mostly about um, manifesting, but I think both those things, like just like magic and manifesting, they're both things that, yeah, there is just, there's just so much information out there that I think like for me, for example, I'm very practical and yeah, I don't like, I don't know I don't like too many things you know like I so get don't. overwhelmed very quickly yeah so do it's like just do simple like if you want to do a a money spell for yourself yeah. okay so there are like standards right so like a green candle will more than likely represent money but if you don't feel it then use whatever candle you want but like a simple thing would be like get a bowl of salt mm -hmm. sea salt put a green candle in it write the money that you want to manifest on a bay leaf and stick that in and then burn your candle. You'd stick some money in there. Like, and just make it up as you go along, but make sure that whatever you're doing, mm -hmm. you're feeling powerful in it. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. that's the key. That you feel powerful in what you're doing. That's it. That's the spell. Yeah. That's the spell. That's the spell. <laughs> Do you feel powerful in what you're doing? That's the spell. Yeah. Just and the always make sure that you remember that your words and your thoughts. And your actions, your feelings are your spells. So make sure because so many people, you can want all the wonderful things in the world, but if you're spewing poison out of your mouth or thinking nasty mm. thoughts, you're not going to be manifesting all the wonderful things in the world. You'll be manifesting the poison that you're spewing. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I just, just just remembering that. I think that, yeah, you've, you've given a really good exercise for that anyway. Uh, just, just before I go, because I've just remembered something with the whole candle thing. Mm -hmm. um, can you put a candle out, like if you're doing a spell then? Because, yeah, <laughs> that's please something. Do. Please do. Yeah. Please, 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 please do not meditate with candles burning with your eyes closed and headphones on. Please don't do things like 
leaving candles while you walk out the room. Major candle companies will have jars that explode when you leave yeah. candles burning, right? Like we are magic, but we are here in this 3D physical plane where there are laws. And I don't mean like legal laws. I mean, laws mm -hmm. of like the way things work and air and flames yeah. work together to create bigger flames. So yes, please, please snuff out your candle and do it in the way that feels good for you. Right. If you want right. to let it burn, let it burn, but don't walk away from it. Like stay there while it burns, but mm -hmm. don't, that's all somebody else. All of those things that you're wondering, Oh, I got to ask her this. All of those things are being made up by somebody else. So what feels right, right for you? Right. If you want to put out the candle. I'm never leaving my house with a candle burning and I'm yeah. never sticking myself, like making myself have to stay in my house for a week because I had a big candle burn. Like, you know, that's, that's crazy. Like <laughs> don't do that. Witchcraft shouldn't make you feel like you're a slave to it. Like you're like, yeah. Oh my God, do that, that, that doesn't feel good at all. It's all about yeah. it feels good. So yeah. put the candle out and go out and the universe would much rather you snuff out that candle and go play in the grass than sit mm -hmm. and stare at the candle. Yeah, okay. that's really helpful. No, yeah, I've definitely, I've, uh, because I read that you shouldn't do this and I put candles out before, but then instantly my energy was like, oh no, I put the candle out. And then Self that's obviously. Prophecy. Self fulfilling prophecy. Somebody else wrote it and now you're like, oh, that's the way it is. Nope. Nope. The universe is much going to rather that you put out that candle and not burn your house down and that you go out and experience this the right now the awareness of right now that's that is what the universe wants it doesn't want you to stand there and stare at a candle for 75 hours while it's burning yeah so it's not like that would be a really universe. big candle <laughs> yeah like i'm so committed look i'm i'm staring at this candle for three days don't do that <laughs> right yes well i mean and they make them like those three wick and four wick candles and people will burn yeah. them and they these big spell and i'm like what are you doing? Are you sleeping in your kitchen? Like, are you sleeping? Yeah. Are you, uh, and then are you sleeping while the candle's burning? Like that's, that's, that's yeah. I, I, because I did made candles for so long. Like I, I, it's so dangerous that people just, yeah, there's, we, we have to always make sure that we're being careful of the mundane things, not just working with magic, but that we pay attention to the mundane, the mundane being the things here in this universe, yeah. like, Candles can burn down your house if you're not paying attention to them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I think that's good advice. Yeah. A bit of safety wouldn't go amiss yep. as well. Um, safety, okay, right. this... safety above, above magical, please. Yeah. 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 Please. Above everything. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, so, so last question just before you go. So it's going to be the, like the new moon here. And like, I think it's like tomorrow or something. That's when it comes in here, I think. Yeah. So, so oh, so you did that face. So yeah. Any, any, any advice? Even though you've just been saying it's like about that, you do what feels right for you. Um. But yeah, normally I would just kind of yeah, just write new, new moon, intentions. New intentions. Yes. Let's do yeah. new moon, new intentions. So, take the things that you want. If you have, oh, this is good. If you are doing like um work stuff, creating your business, things like that. Take the things that you're utilizing for your business, right? Like the notebooks that you write in for your ideas, your mm -hmm. pens, things like that. I am with moon magic. I will always, if you just as powerful being in a window, if you have to do your moon magic inside in a window it is just as powerful. If it's overcast outside, just as powerful. The moon is still there. Um, mm -hmm. But if you're putting things outside, make sure that you are protecting them from the elements, right? Like if, like when I put my tarot cards out, I put them in like Tupperware, Rubbermaid container, like sealed plastic containers right. so that nothing's getting wet. So the same thing, I would take like a bag or whatever and put your notebooks in it or the things that you're using for your business. And I put them out. And as you're putting them out, start saying to the moon and saying to the universe, I am bringing new ideas i'm bringing new energy i'm bringing you know abundance to me all the things that you're thinking about and wanting and it doesn't have to be specifically like i said this was a strawberry moon doesn't mean that i can't focus on healing this moon again mm -hmm. nobody's there to tell me not to it's i'm making it up as i go along so just go out put the things that you're wanting to be affected by that energy and then leave them out 
Another thing you actually, if you re research moon mag magic, you'll have witches who will tell you, oh, you have to go out and pick it up before the moon goes away, like before the sun comes out, because otherwise now it's it's lunar magic and solar magic, like it switches. And I just, I can't get up at five o'clock in the morning yeah. to go get my stuff. So do you know what? My my magic is lunar and solar then. And I yeah. when I get up in the morning and I get my coffee, then I'll walk out and grab my stuff. But yeah, the, the, and it's that's, fine, yeah. That is definitely something that if you research moon magic, you will hear very varying opinions on people will be like, they feel like sunk into it too, right? When we have an opinion, like yeah. that's it, it's gotta be this way. And they will tell you, oh, your your magic won't work if you if you leave it out till the sun. Well, that, that's crazy. The, the universe isn't rewinding time. Like, oh no, now your manifestation's crap because you left it mm -hmm. out too long. Like, no. Yeah. yeah. No, that's really, really helpful. What I've learned from this, um, and I hope other people will learn as well, is yeah, um, not to take everything so seriously. I think, um, especially like, yeah, with spirituality as well. And it's like people just tend to just get very, yeah, very serious and very focused and like, this is what I have to do. And I'm so committed to this thing. And like, I, and like, yeah, I'm, I'm like manifesting this thing and I'm doing this. And, and yeah, like it has to be this thing and it has to be right. And it has to be at this specific time. So I think what you said, and like you said, like, if you're not that, that's like really like, um, the energy, you know, it's, it's not good energy to do anything, is it? So it's like, yeah. if you're just doing it, like, yeah, just, I don't know, like lovingly and calm, like it's going to come out much better. Like I presume that if you're like, have to do it at this time, because I've definitely done that before. Like I have to do it at this time. Right now. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, and the candle. And, 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 and it's, all the, it's all these, these constructs that we've made ourselves. Nobody, I will yeah. tell myself, like I have my website and I'll tell myself, okay, I have to put this video up by 11 a.m., by 11 a.m., by 11 a.m. And in my mind, the entire internet, at 10.59, is sitting yeah. there like, oh, oh, is she ready? She, she didn't ready? do and it. Like, like, you imagine, like, the stock market bell clanging, and everybody's, like, all at, at 11 o'clock. Nobody's on my website, like, okay, she put in, put her video. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. All these things that we assign in our mind of things, and we just, we make everything so crazy uh, important when it's not. I actually, can I read? Touch on something real quick. I couldn't remember before what I wanted to say to you, and it just totally hit me. Oh yeah. When you were talking about how we man when we're manifesting something and you're not sure, like if it's not appearing, like they'll give it a date, right? And then it's not happening fast enough. Do you just like so then you let go? Because I'm going to manifest it by June 21st, and now it's June 21st, and it hasn't happened. I think the thing that people are missing when they're manifesting, and it's a big way that that things manifest, is not seeing that opportunities are how we manifest. Yeah. Right. So maybe the money didn't show up by June 21st, but maybe on June 20th, you got a phone call to go and do something and you declined it. And that was yeah. your opportunity to make that money. So that was uh, that was huge. And I don't know why I forgot, but definitely that's big. Like, make sure that if you're manifesting something that you're paying attention to all the opportunities around you, because that is how we manifest. Right. Yeah. The universe doesn't come down here like it's not a finite thing that comes down here and it's like ring your doorbell and put in a, a, a check there right how does it work it works through us yeah so it always comes through opportunities and if we're not being open to opportunities then how do we manifest yeah it's really funny you said that because that's definitely happened to me before um recently actually that i've um asked for something and then i've been given the opportunity to manifest that thing and i've gone oh i don't really want to do that though <laughs> but i'm right? aware of it so I, but I completely understand what you mean like because yeah sometimes yeah it happens and you're like and it's kind of like i think i'm gonna make a video about this as well I, I, I might have made like something similar already but um where you're like where yeah if you're sometimes not really specific like it's like here's this thing and then you're like that's not what i meant <laughs> and then it's but like, you're not oh, giving you details say. The more yeah. detailed you are in your ask, the more in alignment with your desires the receiving will be. So when you're ima when you're asking for it and then you start to imagine it, that's I'm like play that out like see it like a movie in your mind. Mm -hmm. The more clear your movie is, the more immersive an experience that you're creating for the universe, the more it knows what to match and yeah. to give you. Yeah. But if you're just like I want money, I got 
Mm -hmm. I had a client who wanted to manifest money and then she went on the in uh, on Facebook afterwards and she was like, well, this is stupid. I got a check for, it was like 15 cents or something. Thanks universe. And I was like, well, that's a slap in the face. You didn't ask for a thousand dollars. You just yeah. said money and the universe yeah, gave you money right. and then you shit on, sorry. Then you, okay. you, you were ungrateful for the money you received. Yeah. So it's not like yeah. you're, being like, hey, universe, I loved this. Bring me more. And then yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah thanks. Be grateful for everything. Yeah. 15 Can cents is more than you had when you opened up the mailbox. Exactly. Can I tell you something? When I, um, there was one time, I think this was maybe like through numerology or something. I was really into numerology at one point. And like my weekly reading or my daily reading or whatever was like play in the lottery, right? And I never do, I've never done. And I was just like, oh, whatever, fine. And I did, and I won 15 pounds. <laughs> and I thought it was really funny because on one hand I was like, what the hell? Like, that, like I'd read something and it was like, you know, play the lottery. And, and, then, and then I was like, okay, so I did, I did win money, but then obviously it wasn't like loads of money, but it didn't say that anyway. But I was really surprised because I was like, this is really weird. Um, now I wonder what would have happened if when you got that download that yeah. said, and that's what we call that when you have that, that thought of something, it's a download. So I wonder what would happen if you'd had that download and rather than saying, well, I don't really play the lottery, but I might as well. Yeah. If instead you were like, yes, today's right. the day. I wonder if it would have been more than 15 yeah. pounds and there's no way to know that, but there's a way yeah. to test it for the future. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Right? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, mm -hmm. But it's that's that just proves that like things do work. It's just um, yeah. I was like, I think that was maybe like one of my first experiences, and I was a bit like, oh, okay, that was weird. Yeah, um, and that when you have that little moment, that's the moment right there. You're in that manifestation mode. That's the time to start focusing on what am I manifesting now? What am I manifesting right. now? You want to be this continual thing. And you and again, you don't want to just be things. We want to manifest experiences and people and a joyful life. It doesn't, we don't want to at the end of our lives, sit back and just have a house full of things. Yeah. Because there's no joy in that, right? Yeah. I mean, maybe for some people, but I'm pretty sure you're not, <laughs> not on no. the path of just wanting a bunch of stuff. No. Want to have joyful fulfilling lives full of wonderful yeah. experiences so make sure that you're manifesting wonderful experiences for yourself as well mm -hmm. okay oh wow okay that's that's really great thank you so much um so yeah you're um, welcome yeah yeah um i'll definitely like i said i'll definitely bring you <laughs> on again to talk about other things but otherwise we'll be here please, for like please. four hours uh but this has been you yeah, know, I'm really like, oh those. i have work in front. <laughs> don't get me started Say again. I said I have more I can say. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like, can keep going. Same. I can keep going. No, I'm the same. Like I don't ever like shut up. I'm always talking. So that's what I'm saying. I was like, this will be like half an hour, uh, and I didn't know that you were like yeah. this as well. So we'll just, yeah. We'll, no, talk. it was funny when you when you asked me if I if I could stay extra. I'm like, oh, please get me talking about manifestation and witchcraft. Yeah, you can't. We will shut me up. <laughs> yeah you, i'll be here all day like i didn't like i'll cancel everything i'll just be here the whole time <laughs> um so we'll have to we'll have to schedule for a much longer one next time yeah, yeah yeah exactly exactly well there's more loads more things to talk about but um but yeah again thank you so 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 much for coming on and um yeah this has been really helpful and um yeah i will see you next time right <laughs> okay absolutely thank you so much i really appreciate your time Thank you. Yeah, thank you. No, you too. All right. Have a good day. <laughs> you too. Bye. Bye.